What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Fight Dialogue. My name is Tim, and this is uh, last time I'll be going live uh, for 2022. Welcome to the Fight Dialogue, guys, once again. Um, so, <laughs> before we get started, uh, just some housekeeping, general housekeeping. Um, one, my voice is not going to be the greatest, <clears throat> and two, I may be looking a little paler than I usually do, which is saying something, because... Um, I just recently had the worst, uh, the worst week because uh, I had the flu, uh, so that was rough. Whole whole Christmas little week was kind of ruined by that, but feeling better now, and uh, I'm ready to get back into it. So um, it's been a while since I didn't ask me anything since the summertime, I believe. The last few live streams that I did were. Um, they were fight companions. So uh, this time, it's uh, it's going to be uh, more back and forth with you guys. So go ahead, fill up the chat with as many questions as you want, and I'll try to get to all of them, and um, we'll have some fun. You also might hear my family coughing in the background because, of course, I was sick. I got everybody else sick, and uh, please excuse me if I have a little bit of a coughing fit. Uh, I'll try to keep that to a minimum, obviously, uh, and even if I do, I'll, you know, mute the microphone for you guys, but yeah, man, that that flu kicked my ass. Um, so, uh, we actually have something going on tonight, which is, uh, uh, what's it called, Fury Pro Grappling, uh, which is something that uh, Cage Fury uh, does on the side. Cage Fury is a uh, feeder organization <clears throat> for the UFC, pretty good one out of uh, Philadelphia and it's a it's a pretty good MMA organization a lot of good champions uh come from there and uh you know Sean Brady's one of them uh I think Aljamain Sterling used to fight in that organization a bunch of bunch of good fighters um and they do a pro grappling tournament on the side which is pretty cool um and that takes place tonight <clears throat> excuse me and I think they did one same time last year, uh, and it was also headlined by Rose Namajunas, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, this one, it's uh, Rose Namajunas versus, um, damn, I forget the girl's name, but uh, she's another UFC fighter, uh, always has dyed red hair. Uh, she's a pretty good grappler, and that should be an interesting one. Um, there's also a bunch of UFC vets on the card, Chase Hooper versus Clay Guida, Andre Petrovsky versus Ovin St. Pru, which is actually pretty surprising because they are very separated in terms of uh, their divisions when they fight in the UFC. But Petrovsky's a grappler, Ovin St. Pru not really a grappler. Um, so I guess the matchup kind of makes sense. So yeah, there's 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 stuff going on tonight. And um, there's also stuff going on this weekend. Um, it takes place in Japan, uh, Ryzen 41. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I'm a super Ryzen hardcore fan, like not even close. Um, I only pay attention to Ryzen once, maybe twice a year if they have like an exceptionally good card uh, throughout the year. But the one card that they usually do very well is their New Year's Eve card, which they hold every year. They're the only MMA organization that kind of has dibs on New Year's Eve. And... Um, that is a cross-promotional event with Bellator. I think they did the same thing last year. Um, and it's pretty cool to, one, have two organizations that do cross-promotional events. And uh, two, the, it's actually like a really stacked card. Um, most of the guys that I'm familiar with personally are the Bellator guys. Uh, you know, you got Juan Archuleta fighting. You've got uh, AJ McKee fighting. A uh, few other Bellator vets, Kyoji Horiguchi, of course, who's kind of like, he's kind of both in both organizations when, when you think about it. Um, but the one Ryzen fighter that I've been paying attention uh, uh, paying attention to, excuse me, for some time has been Huberto Satoshi Souza. And he's actually a guy that I made a video about recently. So um, I'm really excited to see how he does against the upper echelon of competition, the upper echelon of Bellator and former champ AJ McKee. So I'm actually really stoked for that. He's definitely going to have the jiu-jitsu advantage going into that fight. Um, 
But AJ McKee, he's such a talented and unorthodox fighter. It's hard to see how else Huberto can win that fight other than off of his back with some type of submission. You know what I mean? Um, but we'll see. It should be interesting. Uh, guys, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, give, give the video a like. And uh, we'll get started here with that with the ask me anything, okay? Um, so, will John Dotson win? Yes, John Dotson fights on the card, I believe. Who is he fighting? I'm gonna look that up, okay? John Dotson is uh, I don't know he he is signed to Ryzen, I believe. I don't think he's a Bellator guy. Let's look it up. Ryzen forty. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Full card, details, highlights. No, I don't want that. I don't want a bunch of ads popping up. Um, okay. Reliable. MMA core.com. Oh, yes. Patricio Pitbull is on the card. He's fighting K Kleber Erbst. Not sure how to pronounce his name, but he's got a hell of a good record. 31-5-1 versus uh, Pitbull. So that should be good. Hiromasa Ogikubu versus Kyojo Horiguchi. Like I said, I don't know most of the Ryzen guys. So um, I'm going in blind for a lot of these. Who is Dodson fighting? John Dodson versus Hideo Tokoro. Yes, John Dotson should absolutely win that fight. Hideo Tokoro is an absolute legend when it comes to MMA, jiu-jitsu, judo. The guy is an extremely talented martial artist, always has been, and he has a very, very um, uh, uh, large amount of experience. I mean, just look at his record, 35 31 and 2. But obviously that record should tell you a few things about him. He's been in the game a very long time and perhaps a bit too long, right? Um to have 31 losses, that's that's kind of insane. Um I don't remember how old he is. And like I said, I don't know much about the Ryzen guys, but <coughs> excuse me. Hideo Tokoro. How could you not know him, right? Um if you've been watching MMA for as long as I have. He is 45 years old. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, just getting over the cold, guys. Um, not the cold, the flu. Much worse. Uh, so, yeah, if John Dodson doesn't win that fight, whew, he should definitely have the striking advantage. It'd be interesting if it goes to the ground because uh, Tokoro is uh, very, very talented. Um when it comes to any kind of grappling, really, takedowns, submissions, um, sweeps, just everything, everything. He can even do a little bit of wrestling, I've seen. So, um, would be interesting if it gets to the ground. I think he might be a little bit bigger than Dotson. I'm not sure what weight class they're fighting at. Um, I would assume it's like 135, maybe even 125. I didn't think Hideo Tokoro was that small. But, um, yeah, I think John Dotson wins that fight. What are your predictions for 2023 champions? Also, Garam lightweight champion. <sighs> I've only seen Garam fight a few times. So I, I, I don't know if uh, he's going to be lightweight champion. But uh, let's take a look at the at the weight classes here, guys. Rankings. Okay. So for flyweight, who's going to be the champion of flyweight? I predict that... Hmm. Well, we don't have Askar, Askarov in the mix anymore, which is kind of a surprise. Tim Elliott, David Dvorak, Manel Kopp, Matt Schnell, Amir Albazi. Hmm, that's an interesting one. Alexander Pantoja. The guys in the top five have fought each other so many times before. It's really hard to say. It's it's like a game of musical chairs at the top of flyweight. I'm 
I'm a big fan of Brandon Moreno, who's now the interim champion. Um, he's been champion before. He's bound to fight Davis and Figueredo for a fourth time this year. Um, it wouldn't surprise me to see him as the champion uh, this time next year. So I'm going to go with um, Brandon Moreno. But we're we're getting close to the time when everything's going to kind of flip on its head for flyweight, uh, I think, because the guys in the in the lower rankings, the top fifteen, upper top ten, they're going to get an, enough experience and enough time within that top fifteen to really challenge the guys that are starting to slow down at the top, um, and maybe it won't happen this year. I, I would expect early next year is when we'll see a really, uh, really uh, sensational uh, flipping of champions uh, for flyweight. So Bantamweight, Aljamain Sterling is the current champion. Whew. And do we know what Marab is going to do? Is he moving up? Is he moving down? Is Aljo moving up or moving down? I don't think Aljo can move down. He's too big. Piotr Jan's still in the mix. Sean O'Malley is ranked number one now. And then Corey, Corey Sanhagen and Marlon Vera. You know, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Chito Vera. I'm gonna go with Chito Vera. I think he's the dark horse of that division. Um, he's just a problem stylistically for everybody that he fights because he's got a, a very good ground game. So if your strategy is to just take him down, like that's that's Aljamain Sterling's strategy in most fights. To have that strategy with Marlon Vera and think that that's a just a foolproof way to win, man, that's that's tough. That's tough. Um, I don't see him finishing Marlon Vera, and I don't see him really ragdolling him or manhandling him. So. That's a problem. His striking has come so far since he first started in the UFC when we're talking about uh, Chito Vera. So anybody, you know, Piotr Jan, Sean O'Malley, uh, Corey Sanhagen, none of those guys are going to have an easy time against him. So yeah, I, I actually see Marlon Vera getting getting the win against most of these guys. Um and even the guys that are more skilled than him, he finds a way to win uh, most of the time. You know, uh, that, that fight with Frankie Edgar is a perfect example. Now you could say, well, Frankie, you know, his chin is not so good anymore, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, man, but he found that that perfect shot, that perfect front kick. Like he could have hit that against anybody and it would have hurt them. You're telling me that front kick wouldn't have put Corey Sanhagen on his ass or even... You know, Aljamain Sterling, you know, that was a beautiful front kick. So I actually see Marlon Vera being the champion. Yeah. Um, okay, featherweight, Alexander Volkanovsky is the current champ. Ranked number one, Max Holloway. Number two, Yair Rodriguez. Three, Brian Ortega. Four, Arnold Allen. Josh Emmett. Korean Zombie. Um... Yeah, he's putting the division on hold for a little bit so he can go fight Islam. So I don't see any of those guys beating Volkanovski. The only one that could really that the only one that really has a a solid stake and a solid chance right now in the current landscape is Yair Rodriguez. Um, I know he lost to Max, but he didn't get blown out of the water by Max. That was fight of, fight of the year um, fight of the year uh, quality that fight was. So uh, I'm pretty confident in my in my decision that Yair is deserving of a title shot. Um, can he beat Volkanovski? I don't know. I don't know. Out of the current lineup, he probably has the best chance. 
before before the last Max fight, I would have said Max, obviously. Um, but Max just got absolutely run the fuck over in that last fight. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to say Volkanovski is going to be the champ in uh, in 2023. All right, lightweight, Islam Makachev. I see Islam Makachev being the champ. Uh, I, I see him defending his title twice uh, this year. I think um, he's going to defend it against Volkanovski. And then I think Charles Oliveira is going to earn a rematch against him. I think it's going to be a closer fight. I don't think Charles is going to get hurt um, on the feet like he did in the first one. Um, and I think he's going to employ a smarter strategy against Islam rather than just like kind of pulling guard like he did in the first fight. Um, but I still think Islam is going to edge him in that rematch uh, when I believe it will inevitably happen. So yeah, Islam is going to be the champ at the end of 2023. Oh boy, welterweight. Leon Edwards is the current champ. He's bound to make a rematch happen with Kamar Usman. Hamzat Chemaev is coming up in the rankings. I see, I actually see the, the title switching hands a couple times this year. I think Leon's going to lose the rematch to Usman, and I think Kamzat's going to come in there and do his thing and then earn earn the belt. Um, I'm not a Kamzat fanboy. I like uh, Chemaev, but I don't think, you know, like he's the best thing put on earth. Um, but yeah, I, he's really fucking talented. And if he can beat Colby which I think um, most of us will agree that he, he's like the next person comes out should fight. Uh, yeah, he's, he's earned that title shot, and I, I think he has the skills to beat um, whoever the champion is when, when he earns that shot. All right, middleweight. Alex Pereira, Israel Adesanya, Robert Whitaker. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... Well, we know that Pereira's weakness is that ground game. And he hasn't... I don't want to say he hasn't been tested there yet. But, um... Like, he has been tested there, but not by, like, a truly dangerous grappler. And there's not too many of them, to be honest, in the top 10 of middleweight. Let's take a look. Okay, so Robert Whitaker, probably low key the best wrestler in the top five of the division right now. Now Derek Brunson is still ranked five. I don't, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess, but isn't he retiring soon? Derek Brunson is a talented wrestler, but he doesn't really. I don't know. Um, I think Robert Whitaker would surprise you with how good his wrestling is. I gotta make a video about him and his grappling. Um, Whitaker's definitely better than Cannoneer, arguably better than Vittori in wrestling. Um, so yeah, I could see Robert Whitaker taking down Pereira and beating him up, and he's a obviously a good enough striker to hang with Pereira. Um. Yeah, I could see Robert Whitaker retaking the belt in 2023. I could also see... No, you know what? I really can't see anybody else. Because when you look at like the guys that are a real solid grappling threat to Pereira, such as Sean Strickland, Roman Delize, uh Jack Hermanson, Paulo Costa. Paulo Costa can't even make weight half the time. And he's not like, he's not what you would call like a terror on the ground. You know what I mean? Um, he's definitely somebody to watch out for on the ground, but like, he's going to stand there and strike with Pereira if he ever gets a chance to fight him. Um, so on Strickland, he's already beat up. So that's a given. The lead Zay, he's not there yet. He's too low ranked. And uh, who's the other guy that I said? Jack Hermanson. Jack Hermanson is going to get knocked out before he even gets some. The, gets him to the ground. 
um, his wrestling is not good enough. So yeah, that that's pretty much it in a nutshell for middleweight. Um, Israel Adesanya could potentially get a rematch and, and take it back. Um, that that first fight was obviously very close. It was a comeback victory for Alex. Um, but I see Robert Whitaker being the champion in 2023. That's that one's that fight is more compelling to me. And um, yeah, it's just uh, that grappling advantage. Uh, who else do we got here? Light heavyweight is vacant. Oh my gosh, what a mess that was this year. Um, but so dramatic, you know? I love MMA. It's so crazy. Um, I see Yuri Prohaska. Well, how long is he going to be out because of this injury? You know? Uh, the way they describe it, it's like the worst fucking shoulder injury to ever happen, you know? Um, and the shoulders, it's its probably the worst joint that you could fuck up next to your knee when it comes to recovery um, from what I've seen, not from what I've experienced, you know. Um, for some guys, when they fuck up their knee, they're out for years, you know. Shoulders are pretty similar. That, that It's something that uh, kind of hangs with you for the rest of your career, even if you do have a good surgeon. So... Um, I would say Yuri Prohaska if he's able to return, but that's still kind of up in the air. So, barring the return of the Czech fighter, I'm going to go with the Dagestani one, Magomed Ankalaev. I think he's the younger guy in the top five that has the best skill set. Um, the other two guys in the top five are Glova Teixeira, who probably only has one or two fights left in him. Still very good, but doesn't change the fact that, you know, you can't beat Father Time. Not not forever. And Jan Blahovich is getting up there too. And Ankoliev arguably beat him, you know. I actually did score the, for, the fight for Blahovich. I gave him the first three rounds, but... You could tell that if that fight went any longer, Ankoliev was going to take it. You know what I mean? Um, if that was a no time limit fight, Ankoliev would have won. Um, and then the other guy is Alexander Rakic, whose performances, first of all, he has an exploded knee, doesn't he? And um, his performances have been subpar um, once he kind of got into the top ranks. So, yeah, I'm going with. Ankalaev, if if not Yuri Prohatska. Got a couple more to get through here, guys. Um, let those questions fill up. Let those questions fill up. I, I really wanted to give this one some good attention because this is a fun one to go after this, who I think will be champion in 2023. Uh, heavyweight. Francis Ngannou still recovering. Cyril Gan, Stipe Miocic. You know, if John Jones fucking returns, who knows what's going to happen. And Sergei Pavlovich, you know, I don't like jumping on hype trains, but uh, I know the guy's got wrestling, and he's obviously got a ton of power and a ton of aggression. He may be one of the only guys where I'm like, yeah, that guy can beat Cyril Gon. He can definitely beat Cyril Gon, because there's not many people that can beat Cyril Gon. You know, even in a rematch with Francis, I would still pick Cyril Gon. Um, Stipe, if he was younger, sure, but Stipe, you know, He's another one. He's getting up there, and he's been gone for a while. So um, if Francis does not return, and John Jones isn't going to be in the mix probably, um, I'm going to go with Sergei Pavlovich. Uh, pff, women's, let's see, women's straw weight. Wei Li Zhang is the current champion. I'm picking my girl Wei Li Zhang, man. Uh, even... Uh, even if they get the rubber match with Rose Namajunas, Wei Li's got the momentum. She's got the fire. And uh, I, I don't know. For some reason, I'm biased for Wei Li Zhang. Women's flyweight. Valentina, she's got to make that rematch happen with Talia Santos because that was a close, close fight. Close, close fight. I see her beating everybody else in the division if she hasn't already beaten them which she has for most of them, uh, except Alexa Grasso, who uh, who hasn't quite worked her way up there yet. 
Um, so yeah, I, I really, I don't know how that rematch is going to go. I would assume Valentina is going to make the correct adjustments. So I'm going to say Valentina is still going to be champ by the end of uh, 2023. Two more, one more, one more division here. <laughs> Women's band and weight. <coughs> Excuse me. Amanda Nunes, still the champion, took it back from Juliana Pena. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think any of these girls can beat Amanda Nunes. So yeah, Amanda Nunes. For both of the divisions, she is champion of. That was fun. Thanks for that question, whoever that was. Who was that? Who asked me that question? I don't know. I lost it. Oh, some guy named Steve. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, Rami, what do I think of Junior Taffa? Junior Taffa was a heavyweight in the UFC, I believe, um, who was pretty good. And I think he got knocked out. Didn't he get knocked out a couple times? Um, but yeah, he's not in the UFC anymore. He's fighting for Ryzen. I like him. I think he's a good guy. Um, or a good fighter, good kickboxer. Um, I don't really know all that much about him, but uh, I have seen him fight before, and I think he's a good striker. Um, yeah, he, he's on that card. He's fighting some sumo wrestler-looking guy, isn't he? Um, I don't know whose team he's on, Bellator or Ryzen. But yeah, if, if you guys haven't heard, um, Ryzen 40 is Bellator versus versus Ryzen cross promotional event. It's pretty interesting. So uh, I'm stoked for that. Give me some MMA to watch in the in the the UFC drought here. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Let's see what we got here. What is your prediction for Islam versus Volk fight? Um, I believe I inadvertently answered that question already. Uh, I predict that it'll be a good fight. It'll be interesting. You know, it'll be exciting. But I think that Volkanovski is going to lose. Uh, he's just not not big enough. It's, Islam is a huge lightweight. So, um, yeah, I think that Islam's going to take him down. And he's going to beat him up there. For some of the fight, at least. Rami, thanks for the super chat, man. What do you think of Junior Taffa versus Sidario on Ryzen tomorrow? Um, yeah, that that's what I believe we were talking about. Um, I haven't seen the other guy fight. I have not seen the other guy fight. Um, if he's a true heavyweight, now we're talking. Um, and like I said, in his picture that I looked at, he kind of looked like a sumo wrestler. And for those that have never watched sumo before, sumo is cool. Sumo's fucking cool. It's it's really a mix of styles in a in a funny rule set, but it's it's interesting. Um a lot of a lot of sumo wrestlers have legit judo skills. Oh, that's my kid crying in the background. He must have fell. Oh, my wife's going to take care of him hopefully. Um but yeah, a lot of sumo wrestlers have legit wrestling skills legit greco skills and legit judo skills especially because of course japan so um junior tafa from my knowledge is a striker mostly um he, uh, he i've heard him compared a lot to mark hunt not just in the way that he looks but the way he fights i believe he trains with mark hunt so uh, i don't expect anything spectacular coming in the way of grappling from junior tafa so it's probably going to be classic striker versus grappler and um, should be fun. Lucas Acevedo, what is up, my friend? Hey, boss, do you think anyone can or will dethrone Gordon Ryan in 2023? You know, I would have said absolutely not just a couple weeks ago. But that fight with um, uh, Nicky Rod was interesting. Gordon Ryan, for those that don't know, for those that only watch MMA, Gordon Ryan is the best grappler in the world right now. Certainly in the realm of no gi, um, but if he slapped the gi on, he's got skills there too. He would be one of the best if he wanted to be. Um, so uh, he had a match uh, on the UFC Fight Pass Invitational recently against his 
former training partner, uh, Nikki Rodriguez, and um, it was it was it was close. When they fought in ADCC, Gordon kind of ran right through him, and that was only a couple months ago. And then in this fight, it was it was damn close. It went to all the overtimes, and during regulation, Nikki Rod broke his ankle, broke Gordon Ryan's ankle, which was kind of crazy. Um, got him in a toehold and Gordon got out, but you could tell his foot was kind of fucked up. So under the right rule sets, there might be somebody out there that can, that can be Gordon, you know, and Gordon's the kind of guy where like, you can tell if he, if he's not the best, he's not going to want to do it anymore. Um, he's not there to be number two. He's there to be number one. So, um, when guys start beating him and grappling, I, c- I could see him then making the transition into MMA. And that's when you really want to watch out, uh, if you're an MMA fan, because that is going to be a treat. By the way, uh, Lucas Acevedo is the, uh, Brazilian translator for the new, uh, fight dialogue channel. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it in uh, in Portuguese. It's like o Dialogo Luta, and uh, I had a bunch of bunch of Brazilian bilingual fans, obviously, tell me that I should make a Portuguese version of the channel. So I did this year. Uh, launched it a month and a half ago. Uh, I got one video up there right now, about to have a second. So um, yeah, if you speak Portuguese or if you just want to show your support for the channel, go subscribe to that. I got the link down below. We also just launched one other new channel today called uh, Combat Collection. And uh, that is a a channel I started with my buddy from Tale of the Tape, which is another uh, MMA channel. Um, and that's like a lot of highlights and stuff. So if you're just into watching MMA and combat sports highlights, go check that out. The link is also in the description. All right. Zariah asks, how would Rainer DeRitter do in the UFC and, uh, middleweight and light heavyweight division? Well, Rainer DeRitter is very good and his jujitsu is pretty exceptional, especially for a guy his size. Um, but he did just get knocked out. Uh, pretty badly in 1FC. Now, that doesn't mean he sucks, but um, I was not aware of the guy who knocked him out. Um, So that doesn't mean anything exactly. But what I'm trying to say is Rayner, so far in his career, he's really only beat up guys who are a little bit past their prime or they don't really have a name. So... Um, I, I think he's good. I think he could do very well in the UFC. Um, but it wouldn't be instant. You know, he, he wouldn't, in my opinion, jump into the UFC and then just start kicking everybody's ass. Um, it would take him some time to build up. He would take some losses. Um, but I think he's very good. Very good grappler. Uh, what is your opinion on Jailton Almeida? Um, I remember watching one or two of his fights uh he did very well in his debut uh knocked the dude out very strong very athletic other than that i can't really think of his style i can think of his face um but yeah uh made a made a good debut uh made a good impression another tuesday night contender series fighter or whatever it's called so yeah i like him I'm going to show this because for some reason it hit it. How would Shavkat Rachmanov hypothetically do in the middleweight division? Rachmanov is good. He's well-rounded. Um, he could he could do well, but man, middleweight is a big jump. You guys don't understand how much 15, 15 pounds in the UFC. That's like that's like 30 pounds basically with the way these guys cut weight. And yeah, it's it's uh, it's a big jump. Yanez versus Font prediction. Uh, Yanez is so good, man. And Font's been on a kind of downward spiral. I think guys have figured him out. I see Yanez winning, honestly. Talia Santos fighting Aaron Blanchfield. Really? 
Really? That's interesting. Erin Blanchfield. I forgot about her, man. That was an impressive win against uh, Molly. Um, now, you know, Molly's not really a grappler, but Erin Blanchfield could do that to most of the women in that division. Trust me. Trust me. Her jujitsu is legit. Um, and Talia Santos, who, you know, staked her claim as a legitimate contender by way of her grappling in the Valentina fight. Um, that's a good matchup, if that's true. I, I didn't know that. Um, so uh, I don't I don't know where this person got their their MMA news from. I'm not an MMA new guy, news guy. Uh, if you didn't notice, if you you know new to the channel, it's not like breaking news, the fight dialogue. No, I don't do any of that. I just watch fights and uh, gave my opinion on them. Uh, or more accurately, I, I give my opinion on the fighter's skill set. Um, that's how I kind of cut my teeth on YouTube. Um, but yeah, if that matchup is happening, I like it. Um, but then who the fuck is Valentina going to fight, right? Uh, Sebastian Colio. Appreciate all your work. Hope you are, hope you keep grinding. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate all you guys joining me for this, for this, uh, live stream here at the end of the year, 2022. Uh, Ilya Tapuria is my new featherweight and is a featherweight and tried lightweight. How would he do against the top lightweights? <clears throat> well, Jai Herbert kind of kicked his ass in the first round of their fight. Um, you know, he, I, I don't want to say he won that fight by the skin of his teeth, you know, cause that, that left hook was fucking beautiful. Um, that finally won him the fight. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think you could tell on his face when, when he fought, when he fought, uh, Jai Herbert, it was like, oh fuck, this guy's big. You know what I mean? Um, there's a lot of guys like that at lightweight. So I don't want to say he would do bad, but, um, wouldn't be easy for him to, to break into the top five. Not at all. Uh, what is the upside of Chris Curtis? What is the upside of Chris Curtis? I'm not sure I understand the question. If you're asking me what makes Chris Curtis different, I've been trying to figure that out myself because I remember watching this guy in the PFL. Shout out to PFL, by the way. PFL represent. Um, and he didn't impress me. Um, which, you know, it sounds harsh, especially since I've had him on the channel before. Um, Aldrich did an interview with him. He's a very nice guy, very nice guy. Uh, but I was like, man, you know, he's he's got decent wrestling. He's got, obviously, great power, good boxing. He's got some kicks, throws him in there. But very, very straightforward striker. Nothing like, nothing jumps out at you about him. And he took some real bad losses in the PFL. And then when the UFC signed him, I think they signed him as a replacement. Um, you know, probably just got the opportunity of a lifetime. I saw that he got signed to the UFC. I was like, oh, cool. He's in the UFC. Good for him. And, uh, you know, obviously he was a big underdog going into his fight. And then he just fucking knocked the dude out. I think it was Philip, Philip Hawes was his first fight in the UFC. That was like, fuck, man. And then in his second fight, big underdog, knocked him out. Same thing. I'm like, what the fuck? And then he fought, he, I forget who he fought, but uh, the dude didn't really want to, didn't really want to get into a brawl with him and edged him in a decision. And then his fourth fight in the UFC versus, I think it was his fourth fight versus Joaquin Buckley, knocked the dude out. Again, an underdog. I don't know what it is about Chad Curtis. Uh, maybe he just needs people to count him out, and that's how he wins. Because, um, yeah, he's good, man. He's good, and there's something about him that just uh, makes you want to root for him, too. How do you think Yaroslav Amosov would do in the UFC's welterweight division? He's one of those guys that's, you know, well-rounded enough. Excuse me. He's well-rounded enough that if you put him anywhere any division, 
any organization, he would be able to hold his own. Um, he's he's got conservative enough striking, but good enough fundamentals to be able to edge a lot of guys uh, in decision. You know, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say he's you know a very super talented striker that can knock anybody out. Not you know not at all, but um, he's got skills there, and I, I would say he's more of a more of a grappler, but um, he mixes mixes it up very well. Um, in the UFC's welterweight division, I don't see him being champion or anything, but uh, he could definitely get to the top 10 for sure. <clears throat> for those of you that are just joining me, excuse my voice, excuse my uh, uh, subdued kind of demeanor. I am just getting over the flu. I, I've been feeling okay for like the past two days, but uh, I really wanted to get one of these uh, live streams in here. Alrighty. All right, these guys are telling me that Justin Taffa is the guy that was in the UFC, and Junior Taffa is his brother. Is that true? Is that true? I want to get that right. Let's check it out. Junior Taffa. <coughs> Excuse me. Junior Taffa. As a New Zealand-born Australian professional kickboxer. Let's see. Let's check out his Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Junior Taffa is the brother of Ultimate Fighting Championship heavyweight Justin Taffa. Yeah, you guys are right. I was thinking of Justin Taffa. Justin Taffa is still in the UFC, right? Yes, he is. I thought he got cut. He did. He was on a two, uh, two loss streak, but yeah, he he knocked out Harry Hunsucker, and uh, he's still in the UFC. So yeah, you guys are right. My bad, Rami. My bad. But uh, in that case, I don't know anything about his brother. I assume he's a kickboxer. Um, like kickboxing style, like he's not a grappler, like I was saying. So, um, What are the questions we got? Thoughts on Zabit potentially coming back? I don't think he's coming back. I think uh, if he did choose to come back, it would be years down the road and it would be against somebody we all know he could probably beat you know um so the the ship has kind of sailed at this point for Zabit being champion or Zabit um being in like the best of the world picture uh he's probably been away for away from the sport for some time now um you know focusing his attention on what is apparently his passion, which is a, a field in medical whatever, and uh, happy for him. Uh, I'm not talking shit about him at all. Um, but to be the best in the world, you have to dedicate your life to that thing. You know what I mean? Um, and if he wanted to come back, uh, you know, he's only been gone for like, what, a year and a half, two years? So it's not like... I can't imagine he would have gotten bored of being a doctor or whatever he is now. Um, so if he does come back, it'll probably be years from now. And by that time, you've lost your best years. You've lost uh, your best opportunities. Um, I don't think he would. I don't think he would come back in the same context. I'm not saying he's not going to come back, and I'm not saying he's not good. I'm just saying he's not going to come back in the same context of. This guy's one of the best featherweights in the world. You know what I mean? Rami, thanks for throwing some more money at me, dude. Predictions on Herberto de Souza versus AJ McKee. Keep going back and forth, but I low-key think de Souza is a nightmare matchup, especially in lightweight. Yeah, these guys usually... It, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I, don't, I don't know for sure about Satoshi, but AJ McKee is a featherweight. 
and they looked about the same size at weigh-ins. Honestly, McKee looked a little bit bigger than Souza did. So um, I can't remember if if uh, Satoshi has ever fought at featherweight, but these guys, like I said, seemed about the same size. So it's interesting. It's an interesting matchup. Souza has never fought a guy like AJ before. I don't think AJ's got any like collegiate re- wrestling accolades, but he's definitely got wrestling skills. And he's probably one of the best wrestlers Souza will have ever fought. If you watch my video about uh, Herberto de Souza, uh, it was my most recent How Good Is Your Grappling video, I talked about a guy named uh, Kidioka. Kidioka was the Japanese guy's name. Grizzled Japanese veteran, very, very good grappling skills, took de Souza down at will. At will. And um, if AJ McKee is able to do that against Herberto, Alberto's only hope is probably his triangle because I don't see AJ McKee getting caught in anything else. Um, maybe, you know, maybe if Alberto sweeps him and maybe takes him, takes his back or something like that. But uh, yeah, off of his back, yeah, that's that's all alberto has got. And when it comes to striking, Alberto can hit. He can hit, you know, he, but he's... He's not a striker. And I wouldn't say AJ McKee is like this, you know, world champion kickboxer or anything, but he's 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 more fluid. He, you know, he um he's more creative than De Souza. He's more well rounded in terms of like his dynamism on the feet. So AJ McKee has way more ways to win. Uh higher chance of getting the knockout, much higher chance of getting the knockout. And a much higher chance of winning by decision, uh, in my opinion. So, um, while it is interesting, and Humberto could definitely pull off the upset because there's no way he's he's uh, the favorite in that fight. I haven't even looked. I'm just guessing, but there's no way. Um, Humberto will probably lose that fight, um, which stinks for Satoshi fans, and I'm one of them. But... Uh, yeah, I think AJ McKee is a little bit too high of a step up in competition. What do you think of Volk versus Prime Aldo Izzy? Wait. Volk versus Prime Aldo, Izzy versus Prime Silva, and GSP versus Usman. Uh, well, Volk already beat Aldo. And I don't think he was that far past his prime. Uh, and that was a boring fight. So those guys are pretty neck and neck in terms of skills. Izzy versus Prime Silva. Uh, Silva. Silva's bigger. And probably a better grappler. And GSP versus Usman. Uh, Usman hits harder. Probably Usman. Lucas... Who do you consider to have the best ground and pound defense in the UFC? That's an interesting question because I have yet to give anybody the score of 10 in ground and pound defense. Um, oh, man, that's tough. Because part of the skill of ground and pound defense is avoiding the position, you know, getting up. Uh, I came to realize that eventually um, because my mentality of surrounding ground and pound defense when I first came up with the concept of how good is their grappling is, all right, if you're getting held down, what is the best way to defend? Um, and of course, there are different ways to defend while still staying on the ground. But honestly, the best way to defend it is to just get back up. Um, and while that's not the main thing I look at when, I, when I'm thinking of ground and pound defense, um, it is one of the things. I don't know. I haven't found him yet. I haven't found that person that has that perfect ground and pound defense. Maybe I have, but I haven't like noticed it while I'm watching because when I analyze these guys, I really have to like sit down and just like watch and just like go over and and check boxes basically while I'm watching them 
uh, do their thing. When I'm just watching the UFC and just, you know, sitting on my couch, I'm not, I'm not really analyzing the guys like I would if I was making a video about them, right? So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a tough question to answer. Um, and I don't think I've found that person yet in the UFC that has that perfect ground and pound deep defense. Real talk, do you actually think if Bilal can be the champ in 2023 or 2024? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that question is from Solaire. Um, I do. He's got the skills. That Sean Brady fight surprised me, dude. I didn't, I didn't think he'd knock out Sean Brady. I really didn't. Now, Sean Brady's not like a, a real kickboxer or anything. He's definitely a grappler, a jiu-jitsu guy, but... Um, He's tough, man. Sean Brady's so tough. And he, you know, nobody's done that to Sean Brady. Not even close. So, um, I was surprised. That's not to say, I'm not saying like, oh, if he can do that to Sean Brady, he can do that to anybody. No, because there's there's levels above Sean Brady for sure. But, um, Bilal's good, man. And, uh... I'd like to see a rematch of him versus Leon. And if he can beat Leon. Now, I I don't know. By the time he gets that rematch with Leon, I don't know if Leon will be champion anymore. That's that's why I'm kind of saying it like that. I think Leon loses to Usman in the rematch. And then I think Bilal should get the Leon rematch after that, you know. Uh few more questions guys and then we'll we'll end we'll end the year with uh the 2022 awards here for what you guys picked on discord so get these questions in i'm gonna jump around here a little bit what are your thoughts on the potential of bo nickel oh he's got a ton of uh potential man uh the first of all the jujitsu skills surprised the shit out of me um because we all knew he was a good wrestler, but a wrestler that can throw up triangles off his back and just get them that confidently, that's uh, that's an issue, you know? Um, so yeah, very, very good potential uh, going forward. Uh, How is your favorite fighter based on style? Um, like, what is the style of my favorite fighter? Um... I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. Uh, I'm a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. I just got my third stripe on my brown belt, by the way. Um, almost a black belt. But yeah, I'm a jiu-jitsu guy. It's my base. Uh, I do, you know, MMA and I do other styles, but mostly jiu-jitsu. So when I watch MMA, the guys that are able to employ their jiu-jitsu skills uh, are something that I find most interesting. Now, I love... I love fighters that have never done a day of jujitsu in their life. I, I love Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje doesn't know jack shit about jujitsu, let me tell you that. But um, he's a great fighter. I, I love the sport of MMA. Um, so there, there's really a lot of, there's, there's a wide range of different styles that I find interesting. But the one that really gives me a boner are the guys that are good jujitsu players, you know. <clears throat> a few more questions okay prime anderson silva versus prime alex Pereira at middleweight who would win uh, probably anderson silva man that guy's chin was crazy guy's chin was crazy and his countering ability just look at what happened in that first round with izzy versus uh alex he just got out of the way just fucking landed that right hand i think the same thing would happen with adesanya or uh Silva, but Silva had more power, I think. All right, guys. So I, I wanted to quick go over your main picks on the Discord for um, for the best of 2022. So uh, I asked on the Discord what the knockout of the year was, and the nominations were Pavlovich versus Tuivasa, Edwards versus Usman, Zhang versus Joanna. That was a good one. Um, Chandler versus Tony and Delize versus Hermanson, even though that one was kind of a TKO, um, still technically a knockout, obviously. Um, and the guys on the discord actually picked 
Pavlovich versus Tuivasa. Maybe recency bias. Maybe I just got a bunch of uh, Pavlovich fans on the Discord. But um, yeah, they picked they picked Pavlovich. Nobody, uh, or hardly anybody, picked uh, Edwards versus Usman, which is most people's uh, number one pick for uh, best knockout of the year. All right, submission of the year. This one was extremely close. The Nominations were Andrade versus Lemos, uh, Islam Makachev versus uh, Charles Oliveira, Oliveira versus Gaethje, Puelles versus Guida, why don't I remember that one, Zhang versus Esparza, another recent one, and Yuri versus Glover. Um, and it was actually a tie. It was actually a three-way tie. Uh, so I'm going to be the tiebreaker, and I'm going to pick... Oliveira versus Gaethje. That one wasn't really that impressive, but I, I'm an Oliveira fan, so I'm just being biased. I'm just being that jujitsu bias right now. But uh, Zhang versus Esparza, I'm, I've also got a Zhang, Weili Zhang bias. Uh, that that one was a good one, and uh, I didn't expect it to happen. Honestly, I I know Zhang's a good grappler, but I thought Esparza was a better grappler, and I didn't think she'd get submitted by Weili. And if she was going to get submitted, I thought that Wei Li would hurt her on the feet first, but she didn't. She just outgrappled her, outscrambled her, choked her out. Comeback of the year. We only had three nominations for this one. It was Leon versus Usman, Yuri versus Glover, and Pereira versus Adesanya, the three main ones. Uh, and everybody picked Leon versus Usman. No argument here. That was crazy. And then fight of the year, the nominations were Chimaya versus Burns, Yuri versus Glover, Poirier versus Chandler, O'Malley versus Jan. That's just one I kind of threw in there to be a troll, even though it was a good fight. Uh, Schnell versus Sumadarji, which was, whew, that one was crazy. And uh, a recent one, Wonder Boy versus Holland. And you guys on the Discord picked Yuri versus Glover. And I would agree, for me personally, when I was watching that one, I was watching it with a bunch of friends, so maybe this is why it was kind of like crazier than maybe it seemed, but we were all just losing our fucking minds during that fight. Every single round had something crazy happen in it. Both guys got hurt multiple times. Both guys almost got submitted multiple times. Just crazy, crazy back and forth. And... I, I say it every time we're talking about fight of the year. When it comes to the sport of MMA, in my opinion, it's best to pick a fight that represents the sport the best, right? That has every aspect of the sport kind of tied into it. You know, wrestling, judo, jujitsu, kickboxing, you know, Muay Thai. If you see every element of the sport kind of take place in this exciting fucking melee that's that's gonna put you in a higher spot you know uh in my opinion um because it it, it just encompasses what this what the sport is and that fight had that that fight had everything man uh very very exciting so i agree with that pick for uh fight of the year so yeah those were your picks. Um, I'll probably do it for the whole channel next time. I only did it for the Discord, so we didn't have as many people vote. But uh, I got to tell you guys, I really appreciate uh, everything, everything this year. Um, I was a little worried going into this year because the guy that I started the channel with, uh, Aldrich Warner, uh, he still does stuff with the channel, um, still involved with it. But his work schedule changed, so we can't really do the podcast anymore. We only did like three podcasts this year, which is kind of disappointing. Um, but I was able to keep up with it with uh, the live streams uh, like I'm doing right now. And, uh, you know, just the regular videos, the how good is their grappling and striking videos that I usually make. And um, even though I've pushed out a little less content than I usually do this year, uh, you guys have supported it. I've... I've think I just hit 22,000 subscribers. So 
couldn't ask for more. 22,000 subscribers at the end of the year 2022. How about that, right? Um, so thanks. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, you guys have been great. And um, the Discord. The Discord has grown way more than I thought it would. Uh, the Discord is... I didn't even know what the fuck Discord was. I just kind of threw it together because um, some people suggested it and then uh, kind of took off. I got the link down below for that if you want to join it. And the, the community on that is really, really uh, special. Um, for those that don't know, I, I started uh, a YouTube channel just to talk to people about MMA because, like I said, I, I do jujitsu. Um, but other than that, in my area, there's really not that many MMA fans. Most of them are casuals. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's hard to have an in-depth conversation with guys that only know the names of four fighters, you know? And uh, I was like, fuck, I really want to have a conversation with somebody about MMA. So I kind of started an MMA channel as a means to just like get out there and just, just have a discussion with people. That's why I called it the fight dialogue, just talk about fights. And um, not only have I been able to do that with the channel, but now I'm able to do that with the Discord. So I really, really appreciate it, guys. It's been a great year, and uh, hopefully we have another great one um, in the year 2023. Um, so that just about does it. Thank you once again uh, for joining me on this live chat. Uh, check out Ryzen 40. Guys, check out Ryzen 40. Check out how good is Herberto Satoshi uh, Souza's grappling, uh, which is my most recent video about that fella. And he will be fighting on that card. And check out the two new channels that we launched this year, Combat Collection and the Brazilian version of the Fight Dialogue. Uh, Combat Collection, we just launched it today. It's going to be highlights and stuff. Uh, we're launching a Patty Pimblet video uh, either tomorrow or the next day, uh, and you guys will like it. So, yep, peace out, have a good night, and uh, thank you.